since my collection of outboard gear is starting to grow, I've been looking into getting a new rack. It doesn't take a lot of research to realize that there really aren't too many options available for under $100 that are both sturdy and well-made and hold more than four or six units. To save some money, I decided to build a rack myself. I had some leftover wood from a speaker cabinet that I've been building, which I'll have a video about soon. So there really wasn't a whole lot that I needed that I didn't already have. The whole project ended up costing me about $30, most of which was for the actual rack rails themselves. The first thing I did was come up with a plan for what size to make it. The standard for racks is 19 inches wide on the inside. I won't give the measurements I use for height and angle because it's completely dependent on how many units you want it to hold and the angle that you're comfortable with. So here was my plan. My pieces of wood were already cut to 13 inches wide, which is a perfect size to conceal the widest rack gear and the cords that will be attached in the back. Here are the cuts that I made. In this diagram, A is the bottom, B is the top, and the C pieces are the two sides. So I ended up with these pieces. Make sure to check that your cuts are square, because even small mistakes here will be trouble when you're putting it all together. You can also see that I cut some 1x2 strip that I had laying around, uh, 2 to fit within the depth at the bottom of the rack, and 2 to fit at the top. These will be used for extra support in the corners and help to keep it square. I taped off the edges of each piece, took them outside, and spray painted them with a $3 flat black paint. This picture was after the second coat, while they were still pretty spotty. After the third coat, they looked great. Here they are with the tape removed. The next step was to actually start putting it together. I learned this method from my grandfather to help keep pieces square while nailing them. You need a piece of wood that's perfectly square on the outside, with cuts to let you clamp it into place. One clamp goes on one side, a second on the other. I used two of these pieces, one on each side of the corner I was working on. Before doing this, I put some wood glue on the edge. I turned the clamped pieces over and set them up so I could nail them together. I used these nails with small heads so they wouldn't stick out afterward, since I wasn't covering the rack or painting it. I ended up using seven nails in the bottom corners and four on the top, but you can really use as many as you think will keep it sturdy. Once it was nailed, I flipped it over and glued and nailed one of the strips into the corner for extra support. In short, I repeated this for all sides, and the rack was almost done. The only thing left was to put in the actual rack rails. They come like this, and the pair that I got didn't come with screws. They have a variety of sizes of holes, so they really don't need a very specific size as long as they're strong enough to hold the weight of your gear and the head is wide enough to hold the rails in place. I followed the example of most racks that I've seen, and I recessed the rails from the front edge of the rack a bit so the knobs of the gear wouldn't stick out further than the front. I used a scrap piece of wood to mark the same distance from the edge to put the rails. So that's really all there is to it other than putting in the actual gear. The rails that I bought didn't come with the small bolts to hold the equipment in either, so I had to get some from my local hardware store. Rack rails generally take 1032 bolts, which are really cheap. Some rails do have them included. So by building a rack myself, I saved somewhere around $100, plus I got something that's exactly what I needed. 